2,000 years of accumulation of uh, amphorae shards. It, it was it was like a it was like a it was like an early Roman period dump, right? You know, <laughs> and but the scale of um, of time approaches the geologic and transforms it into something that feels like nature now. So there's, for me, there's these liminal spaces that feel like it's not as clear what our trace of human activity in life is versus nature. And that relationship, to me, speaks of this kind of question of like the chicken or the egg, and that's where the Gaia is. You know, in the center of the opera, there's a aria sung by the countertenor. Doug, hello, right? And uh, he's gonna, he sings in Chickenese. <laughs> there are subtitles, okay, there are subtitles so you will understand. Okay, you know, um, talking about um, you know, basically to be or not to be, you know, this kind of question about the landscape. And, uh, and um, the only other character, really, is the, the mother figure, and who is also Shopper One. You know, she will emerge from the landscape, birth like Venus, from the Cheerios. Not naked. <laughs> right? Not naked. Not what? Well, yeah. Not n not naked. So it's a children's show. Family <laughs> show. Family show. <laughs> okay. Uh, and um, and um, as there is a kind of, I see the landscape as a place of accumulation of history. Um, and uh, there's a, a kind of accumulation of layering of different texts and sounds, if you will. Uh, that's where a counterpoint of temperament happens. Um, I'm trying not to speak too much like a composer, <laughs> but I'm trying to figure out what might be relevant, you know, and, but also at the same time try to share a little bit of how I think. <laughs> things that might be important to me and why we need these instruments and these kind of sounds. Um, and uh, along the journey, there is a kind of decoupling between text and sound. Right? So in um, when the, the earlier, the first aria that Aliana will sing in the opera, the text and sound are together, it's set in a traditional kind of way, like a, a song. And in this excerpt that you hear, it's more kind of energetic, the saxophone is mainly playing quite closely to it, like unison. So it begins to cover and take over the text, so it becomes more sound. And then in a, a subsequent aria, the text and the soprano singing are, are decoupled. So there's voiceover, spoken text, and then there's vocalese, you know? Kind of a, a, a memory uh, taken apart of, of the relationship between text and sound. Um, and uh, and then after you, you guys do this, maybe I will also I'll introduce the uh, other piece after it. Okay. Um, and in this piece here, um, it's called uh, How High Monte Testaccio. There's a place um, in Beijing um, called the Ho Hai region, in which uh, about a mile long stretch. There's all these like. Um, clubs right next to each other, and each one has a different band. So it's it's like walking around like Charles Ives, you know. And I had a tape recorder, and uh, going from one bar to the other, I felt like I was kind of mixing the different pieces, you know. So it was like a, a landscape, a, a place, a physical space that had a kind of landscape of sound, you know, right, and a kind of layering of it. In the opera, that recording of the Hu Hai area will um, be a transition over which the live music will be. So there's another accumulation of the live music on top of this memory of this landscape of sound. And uh, this is an, a, a, a duo arrangement without that tape part today. Is that enough? Okay. Does that make sense? Is that okay? You having fun? <laughs> okay. It kind of feels like a weirdly like a wedding because I'm wearing it. <laughs> no, but I haven't been married, so I have, okay. Just please sing. <laughs> Sorry, is that really? No, I just want to be trying not to know. Oh no 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 not at all.
Oh, <laughs> 